here, hello and welcome back. And today we want to continue looking at Plex Media Server. And I know last year we did lots and lots of content where we bench tested a number of NAS systems to see just how good they perform. And I said we were gonna do some new stuff in 2021 and here we are. We're gonna be doing lots of remote testing this year and we're gonna kick things off with a favorite. We're gonna go straight into the Synology DS920. Now, right now we're outside in the center of London. I'm sure you can see back there behind me tower bridge and what we're going to be doing is running all of our same plex media server performance tests but with a bit of a difference rather than being over the local area network we are using the nas connected all the way around 50 miles away um, connected to a standard internet connection and today we are utilizing the same laptop we've always used but we're using a tethered internet connection. We're using a standard mobile contract here, and we're gonna be going through a number of those different stream sources that we talked about before. We're gonna be testing 720, 1080, and of course, 4K, all the way throughout our testing. And the whole test are going to be performed utilizing a mobile data collection. So a lot, a lot of that is where transcoding is gonna come in, the reshaping of those files. Because even though we're gonna have a pretty steady internet connection there, we are still going to be using something very, very, very different to the local area connection and um, in-house broadband that we've been utilizing for the previous Plex test. But I just wanted to set things up in this video. We're going to be testing at least another nine NASs in the next two months. So I wanted to get a nice long intro for this one and the rest of them, I promise, will be a great deal shorter. But we're going to switch over now to the user interface here on the laptop, the Plex.tv UI, utilizing network connectivity. And we're going to be monitoring the data usage there on the mobile phone. And of course, we're gonna see just how the 920 performs with this remote access Plex client to host server testing. Let's make our way over to the screen. Right, so here we are on the desktop of my laptop. We've also got my phone with the hotspot already set up here in my hand. And we can see there that I have enabled USB tethering and the device is utilizing the 4G at the top of the phone there. Hopefully we'll get that off screen. So here on the screen of my desktop running on battery power, we have got on the left hand side of the screen, Plex Media Server running on multiple NATs here that we're gonna be testing throughout the course of today. But today's video, we're looking at just the DS920. I'm sorry if the wind interferes with the mic from time to time. Uh, on top of that, on the right hand side of the screen, we have got the NAS itself, the DS920 Plus. At the top of the screen, we've got the resource monitor, and on the bottom of the screen, we have got those files that we're gonna be using. We're not gonna be looking at any of the feature films like we did in the part one of these tests last year. Today, we are looking strictly at the Jellyfish files there, and you can see this is a 920, and you can see that the Plex server we're connecting to is not local. You can even see at the bottom of the screen there, we are using that tethered connection there directly, and if you don't believe me, we're gonna turn off Wi-Fi as well. And we're gonna go straight into this with the tethered connection. Uh, before we go any further, you can see there I've done a speed test earlier on. The upload is pretty awful, but if we go ahead and run a second speed test there, you can see that on that 4G connection, we're getting some middling figures there. We've got about three to four bars on the 4G on the phone. So again, I think this does represent a middling network connection remotely being accessed. We've got the upload and the download there as well. And I think that's enough for us. I think this is pretty fair, so I think we should go ahead and start our testing. Oh, and an extra point, I will be disabling sound on this because of the YouTube bots. So again, take my word for it that there is audio on these clips, we're just not playing it. So we're gonna go for the easiest file first. We're gonna go for the Jellyfish three megabits per second 1080p file. We're also gonna open up the settings as well. Get that there on screen. You can see it automatically converts that file there for us. And again, there's a little bit of light on the screen here, but I do think we're seeing some pretty easy going performance there. It is playing all the way through. We're not gonna flick between too many of the transcoding systems here. We're just gonna let the system play back these files automatically. And we're gonna keep a little eye on those figures on the right hand side of the screen there to tell us what exactly the system does throughout these tests. So that was the H264, no real hassle needed there. Now we're gonna switch into an HEVC or H.265 version of the same multimedia file. As you can see, unsurprisingly, it's converted it immediately. And seemingly there, the buffering and the transcoding has been very quick, very easy indeed for this transcode. So again, pretty impressive, easy stuff there. I think it's gonna be interesting to see what happens next. We're just gonna let that play out. Don't worry, we're not gonna make every single file play all the way through to 30 seconds. 
as much as I'm trying to limit the background noise, this is London. There are bloody big red buses and they will be annoying along with the other bits of traffic along the way. Next, we're going to go for the same file in 10-bit HEVC or HE H265. And again, a little bit more work there. It's definitely not played immediately this time. And we can see there the buffering on the bottom, not quite as you know snappy as the previous iteration that we saw there, but I do think it's going all the way through. It's also worth highlighting, we are of course using OBS here, so I apologize in advance if some of the screen capture there just jumps a little bit. We are running on battery power and we're using screen recording for transcoding. Consequently, quite a lot of work here happening on a laptop here running on a battery. So again, still played fine for me. I'd say that's absolutely fine. So from this point, we're not gonna to focus too much on playing them all the way through, and we're gonna go more for the heavy hitters. Maybe we'll do one last H.264. We knew that the H.264 files would be quite easily played uh, because this system already does an exceptional job of playing that as it is. We're seeing those spikes in the CPU um, happening, of course, because of the transcoding and the network activity as well. All there happening in real time um, via the resource monitor there on the Synology, that DS920+. Plus. But again, playing absolutely fine all the way through to those 30 seconds there. I think that's fine. Now I think it's time for us to switch it up a little bit towards something a little bit more aggressive. Uh, and we're going to make our way into that some of that 10-bit. We're going to go straight now into uh, the 10-bit HEVC or H.265. 10 megabits per second jellyfish file there and we're going to see how this plays out and again we're going to get those settings there on screen and once again remember that this will be automatically converted every single time because we are using what would be considered a slightly throttled internet connection there it's still playing back the file pretty well indeed of course it is lessening that transcoding there it is worth remembering that this is going to transcode every single one of these files uh, perhaps what I should do uh, just before I move on forward into the testing is to run one of these in original quality um, and just see just how well this plays it back so again we're going to let that finish up there and then what I'm going to do is play back that exact same file but this time we're going to be making the system play it back in exactly the original quality we'll let it happen within the user interface so what we're going to do is pause it quickly there we're going to open up that and we're going to want to see the original format of that file unfortunately it has to be converted because it is an h265 but still nonetheless this will be an automatic transcode there but again it is still lessening it to standard quality there definitely something to bear in mind for you guys that want to take advantage of h.265 10 bit media you know hdr that sort of thing um, it's definitely worth bearing that in mind but we can skip forward we can see there the caching was done pretty quickly there indeed so let's exit that file there and just to go back to my earlier point let's try that h264 i know i said we wouldn't try h264 again but this time we're going to pause it there and force the system to play back the original quality and even there on the h264 it won't allow us to play back original quality it considers our network connection insufficient to perform that um, if we move ahead from that, we can have a little look coming out of there and now move into a 30 megabits per second transcode there. So now we're going to go for a 1080p HEVC 30 megabits per second playback. Sorry about the wind picking up there, guys. Let's go ahead and play that file. And again, automatically downgraded that file to a lesser quality, largely due to, I imagine, the internet connectivity we're being involved with here. But... It is still playing about that file, but it is lessening it down to the 328 megabits per second there. So we can go back to the original quality there, but again, it will not let us force it through. Now, while it's doing that, let's take a little look at the NAS over at this end. So let's do a quick performance benchmark there within the network settings of the Synology NAS. Let's have a little look there and see just what kind of performance we are putting out here on the other end there, because it is still um, a 100 uh, megabits per second or 1 GBE connection there and ideally uh, we've already done performance testing on that side to see that it is definitely pushing out the right speeds locally there for us but let's make our way into the next uh, let's go back there let's go back a tier now we're going to go into the 100 megabits there let's see if it plays it back obviously again it is going to minimize it down to 328p 
as it's been doing throughout the course of these tests, but it has still allowed us to play back this file, albeit in a lessened form. So we're gonna have that there, let it start to play back. Oh, it's struggling the tiniest bit this time, but nonetheless, it is still playing it. There is certainly um, less of an advantage in terms of that caching. It's caching up and it's still ahead by uh, around 15 to 20% there based on the seconds on this 30 second clip. And nonetheless, that to me is still doing fair and well. The system is still able to transcode it down and 328p would still be more than sufficient for your mobile phone there. Uh, now we're gonna move into the 4K file. So now we're gonna go into an HEVC 10-bit 4K file. And this is where I think the struggle is going to get real. We can certainly see the spikes on the CPU being uh, pushed even further. We can certainly see the network um, spikes there throughout the testing but the 4k file it is not having any of it it really is struggling there to play back that file for us um, we're going to let that there the buffering's reached seven eight seconds there but i do not think that's going to be sufficient for us there particularly when playback occurs i think this is just going to kick us out as it has previously oh no we are seeing playback but it, um but it may just peter out at the 30 seconds i think maybe it'll win this round but it's not going to be a solid victory from me i've got to say um, still again good for mobile phone users if you've got a little bit more time or a stronger localized internet connection i think this is worthy of still giving a little bit of concern to let's do another google speed test there let's have a quick look because we do want to see if our consistent connection is being maintained if anything it was better than it was before on that metered uh, 4G connection, but at 10 megabit there, we can certainly see that this is gonna force the system to play back those smaller quality files. Now, we're gonna make our way into the heavy hitters, the ones that I very much doubt this system will play. This is the 200 megabits per second 4K H265 UHD 10 bit file. Um, it is also worth highlighting while we're running these tests that I am utilizing the default version of Plex. I've purposefully disabled the Plex Pass in today's video. The reason I've done that is a number of you were quick to highlight in my previous videos that to talk about Plex in um, using the premium package or the paid for service wasn't really indicative of a lot of easy buy a NAS and set up users. So I've intentionally disabled those features and the encoder is using nothing but software there. It's also worth highlighting, I am not taking advantage of the fix that we published a while ago, thanks to users over on Reddit, um, that uh, allowed the Synology to take advantage of um, improved uh, net, um, transcoding properties of that CPU. Uh, I did that so you could see this in its base form, but I will say I am impressed that the Synology has been able to play back this aggressive file. Of course, it is gonna hit a wall here, and it did have to knock it down to 328p for the network, but I still think this is a suitable enough um, representation of what we're trying to do here. And although it has stopped and it is gonna buffer a little bit, I'm pleased that it's managed to play back this file, albeit not perfectly. So let's end the video on the biggest file, that 400 megabit 4K UHD H265 10 bit file. And again, I think we're gonna be waiting here a while and while it does that, I will sort of wrap things up here. Again, we are looking at transcoding down to these smaller sizes. This video has been predominantly based around the idea of transcoding significantly. We can see hardware resources being used a lot throughout this whole video. But nevertheless, if you are someone that enjoys your media on the go, you are someone that enjoys watching media on your mobile phone or tablet devices, and you're not looking to watch that 4K file in some high-end 4K way, I think the 920 Plus has significantly proven itself to stand up. Yes, it is bottomed out on that 400 megabits per second 4K file, but given the weight of this file here at the bottom, I do think it's fair to say that we wouldn't have expected the Synology to attack this in the first place. Nevertheless, this has been my second barrage of testing of the Synology DS920 Plus. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. We will try to redo this test coming soon with uh, Plex and the fix enabled. I know a number of you, even though I'm trying to aim for you guys that are first time setting up, I know a number of you would rather see these tests redone with a more steady 
uh, highfalutin, maybe a 5G heavier network connection and internet connection, as well as the CPU fix that we published before and Plex Pass being enabled, just to make things absolutely fair. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe if you did and like, just to let me know that you guys enjoy these videos. And again, do go to the link in the description to learn more about network attached storage, Plex Media Server, and more from myself at NAS Compares. I will see you next time.